What's going on folks? Welcome back. This is your boy Mitch of Mitchpiration. If you're returning to my channel, thank you guys for staying plugged in. And if this is your first time being on my channel, I just want you guys to know that this channel is going to be about life, manhood, and motivation. So if any of those topics are important to you, I recommend that you like and subscribe right now so you can stay in tune to everything going on in my channel or on my channel. So as you see from the thumbnail, I'm introducing a new series today, y'all. Um, I got my phone because I definitely want to make sure I'm saying some things correctly. Um, but this new series, y'all, is called Shift Talk, all right? I'm going to say that again. This new series is called Shift Talk, all right? So when you look at the definition of the word shift, there's quite a few. But the one I want you to keep in mind um, over the course of this series that we're going to be doing is this one. All right. So the shift I want you guys to keep in mind is the shift that means to have a change in emphasis, direction, or focus. I'm going to say that one more time. A change in emphasis, direction, or focus. So a lot of the things that I'm going to be talking to you guys about and sharing with you guys on my channel will deal with emphasis on certain things, how to give you guys direction and better ways to go about doing certain things, but also shifting your focus, y'all. If we're going to be completely honest, shifting is something that happens in every aspect of life, guys. We shift all the time, whether we're aware or whether we're unaware of things that are happening. But as long as you're living, you are constantly shifting. So my goal with this series is to help you guys shift some things in your life so you can be the best you, you can be not only for yourself and your peace, but for the peace of those around you guys. So with that being said, that's just a summary of what you can expect from Shift Talk. And now I want to get into what the focus of today's shift topic is going to be about. All right, folks. So I want to share with you guys a, a regimen or a day-to-day -day thought process that I use to make sure I'm being the best person I can be for my own personal peace, but also for the pieces of those, or not pieces, but for the peace of those who I'm in relationship with, whether that's friends, family, fraternity brothers. As many of you know, I'm a member of Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated um, and just anything else in between, business, anything. So there's a couple of things. And if I look to the left, I'm trying to read my notes. So don't 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 mind me if I do that. Um, but there's a few questions that I ask myself daily. All right. The first question is this. Who do I owe an apology to? So there's going to be times when we live life that we're going to have agreements and disagreements with people. And when we're not feeling where somebody's coming from or what somebody is saying, our natural response is to turn up and get hype and escalate and do all these things. But in the process of that, we can fall short and not being able to have the maturity to accurately problem solve and make sure we're not allowing the same issues to continue to rise over and over again. And in the process, we may say or do some things that hurt the people we're directly in communication with in that moment in time. So it's always good to realize like, hey, was I mature in this situation? Did I actually meet meet in the middle with this person? Did we come to an understanding or did we leave the situation wild, crazy, and there's still confusion? And if so, do I owe them an apology for anything? Uh, because I know one thing we'll say is we always feel justified in the moment when we feel like we're right about something, right? And nobody is going to change our mind. But if you want to keep it a buck and keep it real, in hindsight, there are a lot of times and moments where we didn't handle ourselves in the most mature way. And we got to go back and fix some things that we didn't do correctly, especially if we value a relationship with that person. Now, me personally, whether I value a relationship with that person or not, I'm just going to always try to do the right thing and be the bigger person. It's not easy. Um, everybody can't do it and that's okay. But for me, it's something that I've tried to be more concerned about making sure I'm doing on a consistent basis. So whether we're super close or whether we're distant, like if there's an interaction that happens and I feel like I did or said something wrong and I owe you that apology, I'm going to just step up to the plate and apologize, get my part out. Because after that, whatever beef you want to have, that's between you and God. But 
I believe God sees everything I do and I want to make sure I'm pleasing him. So I'm going to make sure that I'm doing the right things, even though it's not always the right thing to do or well, not always the right thing to do. But I'm going to always try to do the right things, even when it's not the popular thing to do. That's what I'm saying. So my first question is always to whom do I owe an apology? My second question is, am I extending the same grace that I asked for? I can go on for days about this. Maybe I'll make this a topic within itself one day. But we don't understand this concept of grace well. And we got to do a better job of understanding what grace is before we actually try to exercise it, right? So when, I, when I'm forgetful or I don't make myself intentional about pursuing things with people in the right way, my reaction is not to be convicted for that or talk down to for that. I just want you to remember like, hey, this is just one situation where I didn't meet the standard. So forgive me, forgive me, forgive me. And I want that grace. But I have to realize, am I extending that same grace to other people? And so it's important that in those moments that we're doing the things. And I'm just grabbing my laptop because it's cutting up today. But it's important that we do the things that are being uh that we expect from people that we're asking for. Like, like the golden rule says, we learned this in kindergarten. Treat people how you would want to be treated. You can't treat somebody crazy, and then when they give you the same energy, you feel some type of way about it. That's not how life works. You literally are getting what you put out. So when I say, am I extending the same grace I asked for, it's as simple as that. Am I treating people how I want to be treated? When people disappoint me, Am I okay with that? And am I willing to forgive because I value them and that relationship to move forward? If I'm not willing to forgive, how do we move past this? Do you go your separate way and not go mine? And we just do that. You know, we can separate and that's okay as well. But that's something that I want you guys to always be putting thought into. Are you literally giving the same grace and extending the same grace that you asked for? Because more times than not, we're not practicing that in an effective way. So we got to improve in that as well. Number three, who have I poured into? All right. Um, and this leads me. Um, so I'll just combine these two together. So one is who have I poured into and who pours into me? So my philosophy when it comes to life and friendships, I believe everybody should have three levels of friendship, right? You need to have people who are living the life you're headed in the direction of. You want to have people who are, quote unquote, doing better than you in your life, right? Because you can learn from them. They'll be willing to give you the wisdom. If that trust in that relationship is there, they'll be willing to give you that wisdom to help you elevate to the level they're on because you're aspiring to get there. So that first level is having people who are doing better than you. The second level is having people who are alongside you. You want to be in community with people who are in the same space of life you're living. So, for example, if you just got out of college and you're trying to get into this professional lane, you want to be in relationship with people doing the same thing. One for accountability. You can keep each other focused on landing that dream job or at least getting your foot in, door, in the door in that field or that organization that you dreamed about working in. So you always want to have people who are by your side, walking life with you, alongside of you, for the purpose of keeping you accountable. And then lastly, you want to have people in your life, and this ain't popular, but you want to have people in your life who you're doing better than. So just like you have people that you look up to, that you seek, seek guidance for, you need to be reaching back and doing that for somebody else. It's easy to look down on somebody, say you ain't this, say you ain't that, but there's so much, um, there's such a reward that comes in being able to be a mentor to somebody, to be able to be that big brother, big sister figure to somebody and really help guide them to where you're at. Now, you might look at yourself and say, hey, I ain't really done too much in my life. I'm just trying to make it myself. But don't ever discount your story. There is always somebody who is watching you and is paying attention to your story. Me personally, in the spaces in my life where I'm feeling like I'm doing the most work, I've usually gotten like the least recognition. But in the spaces in my life where it seems like things are hard, but I'm still pushing through, that's when people are like, bro, I see what you're doing, keep going. I like what you got going on. How can I be a part? This, that, and the third. So never count yourself out 
based off the fact that you're not where you want to be. There's somebody watching you and there's somebody that wants your story so they can learn how to grow from your story. But people need your gift. Everybody has a gift inside of you. And I'll talk about this in another episode, but I'm going to help you guys figure out how to identify your gift and how to continue to cultivate your gift so you can give your best out to the world. So those two questions are who have I poured into, meaning who are you reaching back to help? Who are you pulling up to be where you are? And then in return, who's pouring into you? Who are the reliable people in your life that you see as a mentor, big brother, big sister, mother figure, father figure, grandmother figure, grandfather figure, who are pouring into your life? Guys, if you hear noise, they're doing construction. I ain't really feeling that, but it is what it is. If not, that's cool too. Um, and then the last question, y'all, this is my last question. Is it a me thing or a God thing? All right. So. This is why gifting and purpose is so important. We can have our own plans for our life. If you haven't been able to tell by now, I'm a Christian. I'm very proud to be a Christian. Is our community perfect? Absolutely not. Do we have work to do? Absolutely. That's why this journey is about progression, not perfection. There's only been one perfect person that ever walked this earth, and we all know who that is, the Lord Jesus Christ himself. But once you understand who Jesus is and how he works, then you have to be more accountable for yourself. And that's something that's more difficult walking this walk of Christianity. But sometimes you have to take time to think, is what I want for my life, is it a me thing? Do I want this to happen so I can get fame, so I can get gratification, so everybody can look at me? Or do I want this because this is really God's design for my life? And, this, and besides the fact that it's a desirable outcome, is this still going to reflect God's love? and God's power and what God can do when you're willing to be used by him. So I've been humbled in a lot of occasions because I've chosen to take this me path. And honestly, when I tried to do a lot of things my way in my 33 years on this earth, they did not transpire the way I thought it was going to transpire. When I was trying to go right, thinking I'm doing what I need to do, a lot of stuff went left. So now what I've grown to the maturity to do is to say, hey, God, if it's in your will for my life, this is what I want. For example, my top two goals are to be a husband and a father. God has granted both of those because I was willing to follow his path. First of all, get myself together, figure out who I am, how I need to be as a, as a husband and a partner to a female or a woman, I should say. And then from there, grow and actually seek out and find the woman who is most compatible and who I can see myself doing life with. So at this point, at 33, I am a husband and on November, officially, I will be a father. Um, and so just keep me in prayer in that area. It's a process. I love marriage. Marriage is a beautiful thing. I'm enjoying the journey with the woman I love. But we're still learning, unlearning, making new traditions, coming to new ideals about how we're going to raise our future family. So that within itself is an important thing to keep into consideration. But with that being said, guys, that's what I want you guys to focus on. If you want to see some shifts happen in your life, Ask those questions. Question one, who do I owe an apology to, right? Am I extending the grace to people that I expect to get back in return? Then who is pouring into me? Who is that person I can go to when I need help to elevate? Then the reverse, who am I pouring into? Who am I helping to build up, to strengthen, to elevate? And then lastly, is it a me thing or a God thing? When you get out yourself, I promise you guys, when you do things and realize things are bigger than just your self gratification and for your purpose, things will open up. The world can open up to you, y'all. Like, I'm telling you this from experience. I don't know how else to say it. Like, that's the best way I can put it into words. When you get out of yourself and you realize you were created to impact the world, it makes all the difference. And how you think changes, who you hang around changes, your standards change, just everything about life changes. 
And so that's what I wanted to share in this first episode of Shift Talk, y'all. But what I need you guys to do is continue to be a part of my community. I want to continue to do this thing for y'all, but I can't do it without your support. So please like, comment, subscribe, tell a friend to tell a friend to tell a friend. As I start getting more subscribers, I got more ideas for giveaways that I want to do. Um, but I can't do this without you guys, and I'm thankful for the subscribers I have now. The Bible tells me not to despise small beginnings. So although I might have, what, like 152 subscribers, who's to say I won't have 152,000? You know, like it can, it can go there, and I'm believing that for myself. But my goal and my passion is people. And so I want to share with you not only quotes and ideas, but the realities that I've had to go through, my shortcomings, and just share and be transparent with y'all about who I am, and maybe something that I share can reflect back on you and help you change your life and make that shift that you need to change. So with that being said, guys, this is the first episode of Shift Talk. Many more talks to come. We may have some special guests coming soon. You'll have to stay tuned to find out. So with that being said, peace.